Hey guys, Logan here from Popular Woodworking Magazine. Welcome to our shop. So if I get a lot of questions when people come visit the shop, uh, there are three main topics. Uh, what's the floor? Because everybody likes that. What did we do for lights in here? Um, because it is nice and bright and I happen to have videos for both of those. But the third topic that people ask about is about our heating and cooling system in the shop here. Because we wanted to make sure that I mean, we're running video equipment, photo equipment, we are in here working every day. We want to make sure that it's comfortable. We're in the middle of Iowa, so we get really hot and humid during the summer, and we get really, really bitterly cold during the winter. So we have swings both ways. So we need to make sure that we had something that was going to cover us for both of those. So we installed two different systems in here. We installed radiant heat, and we also have a system to deal with air conditioning. Uh, but first I want to kind of walk through some of the options. So for your shop, depending on where your shop's at, you can opt for a couple of different things for heating and cooling. Easiest just being open up a garage door and whatever the temperature is outside, that's what you're getting. Uh, and that works for some of the shoulder seasons like we are right now. It's middle of April, uh, it's 60 degrees out, it's beautiful out. But not super great when it's really hot or really cold. An option for cooling is to, and heating as well, is to go with something like a traditional HVAC system. That's gonna be a furnace and some form of uh, air conditioner that sits outside. And that works okay, uh, takes up a lot of room in your shop. Uh, if you have a standalone shop like this, that might work well for you. My problem with those is they tend to be fairly expensive. I think you're about $10,000 into a, an entire system um, before you start getting into ductwork and stuff. So we chose not to do that. Uh, for heating, you can go with something like a propane heater, um, a wall mounted unit, a ventless one, or a little torpedo heater. And those work, uh, they put out a lot of heat, but you have some fumes to deal with. Uh, they get really hot right around them and they may not distribute the heat well. For cooling, window air conditioning units work well for a lot of people and that is a great option. My problem with that in this shop is they don't look the greatest. Um, when we're filming in here or doing photos, I don't necessarily want a window air hanging out of the window. Um, but it may be an option for your shop. So what did we decide here? Well, like I said, for heating, we decided to do a radiant floor system in the shop. So there are tubes in the concrete that run hot water through them off of an electric boiler and help heat up the shop. And that keeps it above freezing in here. Uh, what I have found is that electric boiler is extremely expensive to run. So once we get into the next uh, heating season, I'm gonna set that temperature much lower and rely on my other system to pick up the slack in the heat. Uh, that radiant floor will keep everything above freezing, uh, but we will just turn on the other heater when we are in here. So what is this other system? Well, the other system is a mini split system. And these are popular in Europe, have been for a long time, and they're becoming more popular in the US. And I already have one installed in this shop. We're gonna install two systems. So we're gonna install that second one today. So let's go ahead and over to the other corner of the shop. We'll talk about what this system entails and how I think it's a really good option for a lot of people in their shops. So the system that we installed in this shop to cool it and to help supplement heat uh, is one of these guys. And this is a mini split system. Now these are pretty popular as I mentioned in Europe and they're also popular in apartment complexes because you can segment off and each apartment or each room can be heated or cooled by one unit. Now for our shop here, which is about uh, 1600 square feet, 1300 of that is open shop space, the rest is a bathroom and an office, we have two condensing units. Now I've already installed one condenser with one air handler and that's actually up here above the window. And that one is to heat and cool uh, more or less two thirds of this open shop space. This unit that we're gonna install today has two air handlers. Uh, so we have this guy here, which is a smaller unit. This one's gonna go in the office. Uh, that office is not yet ready because we need to install this one because the lines are gonna run through the ceiling in the office. Uh, once that's done and I drywall, then we can go ahead and install this one. This air handler up here is gonna go above our office and bathroom door and blow out into the rest of the shop space. And between this air handler and the one that's already installed, that is going to cover most of the heating and cooling uh, in this space. And even turning this guy on right now with a little remote, I can feel it pumps out a lot of cold air pretty much immediately. Now, depending on what unit you buy, this one's a Mr. Cool, they have heating and cooling ratings. So they will heat uh, up 
to a certain temperature uh, below zero. So I think these ones are set at negative five degrees. So they'll heat down to negative five and then they'll cool uh, up to a certain temperature outside. Um, so you just have to make sure you select one for your environment. Now, the reason that I chose this Mr. Cool kit is because this is considered a DIY kit and everything's pre-charged. What do I mean by that? This condenser that is going to sit outside on brackets has refrigerant already inside of it. Likewise, both of these air handlers have short little hoses on them. Those are pre-charged with refrigerant. Also, I have a spool of line here. This line is, has fittings on both ends. And this is pre-charged with refrigerant. So once the air handler is installed, the condenser is in place, the line is hooked up between the two, you can go ahead and loosen a set screw on that condenser and that fills all the lines with the refrigerant. They're already set, they're already charged. It's ready to go. So this is a true DIY kit and that's kind of what led me down the Mr. Cool path rather than another brand because I felt like those I probably needed to pull in a HVAC professional install, but this one is a DIY kit. Now, there are a couple things to think about before you consider installing one of these. First is where it's gonna go. They're easiest to install on exterior walls. Because these are cooling, there is gonna be condensation. So you need to have a drain line that is able to run outside. So this unit above the window is on an exterior wall. The lines go directly from the air handler outside into the condenser and the drain line is right there. So it drips right outside. For this one that's gonna sit above the doorway, uh, above our office and bathroom, I have a drain line that I installed inside of the wall and that runs outside. So it's a little bit non-conventional, but it's gonna work and it's gonna allow that water to drain out. You also need to make sure that you have enough hose to reach your condenser from your air handler. And manufacturers will have different recommendations on how much rise and run you can have uh, in height difference between the air handler and the condenser. So if you are, let's say on a second story building, you need to make sure that your unit uh, meets the requirements for having you know, a two story air handler going down to a first level condenser. Uh, that's all in the weeds and we'll deal with that later. So let's go ahead and talk about getting this installed and we'll step over to where we're gonna install this air handler. I'm gonna bring Colin in to help me hang some templates and stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get this installed because it's gonna get hot here in a couple weeks. So unboxing the air handler, it's packed with this template that I just slapped up there. It's probably crooked. I have a level, we'll level it. But this template is important because it shows where the mounting bracket goes, the outside of the air handler, as well as where we need to drill a hole for the pipes that are going to go through. Uh, and the Mr. Cool kit does come with the right sized hole saw here. So I'm going to climb up there, make sure it's level, and then we're gonna drill a hole through this uh, into the wall and ceiling of the office uh, so we can start running some pipes. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and grab that air handler and hang it on this bracket and feed those hoses through. We have an electrical line, two copper hoses, and then this is the drain hose. So when these go in, these are going up and through the ceiling to the outside. This is going this way and down to the drain hose. All right. So now let's go connect those lines to the other set. Maybe we'll go outside first. All right, uh, so this condenser unit is going to go outside and that's what that air handler is gonna hook up to. Um, this one, it's pretty heavy. I think Colin and I could probably lift it, but we'll grab a couple of other guys. Now there's a couple of ways you can mount this. This can either be put on a concrete pad, uh, but because we're up against the timber here, I have wall brackets already installed out there. Uh, they're just two kind of L-shaped arms that this will sit on and bolt to. And then the hoses will come through the wall and connect uh, down by Colin's uh, feet over there into the condenser. And then the electrician will come in and hook everything up with a quick disconnect. Uh, so now we're gonna grab this, bring it outside and get it put in place and come back in and run some hoses. So now we're at the point where we can go ahead and hook up this head unit to that condenser outside. The first thing we need to do is drill a hole in the siding. Now, Mr. Cool sends a hole saw. That's the right size for this pre-charged line set. 
and it will cut through the steel siding. You just got to go slow and watch the sparks and watch the chips. But then it's a matter of uncoiling this line and stringing it from the outside through the hole and connecting it to the pigtails on the back of this head unit. The most important thing to remember about these pre-charged line sets is they cannot get kinked. So you don't want to use any mechanical bending tools to bend them. You want to bend them by hand pressure and keep them nice and straight. Once I get them there, I'm going to use a couple of wrenches and just kind of cinch them down nice and tight. And this line is pre-charged with Freon. So once I have this connected, I can connect the other end to the condenser outside. And then there's a couple of set screws that I can back out. Once I back those out, it's going to completely fill the rest of the system with Freon. And then everything's pretty much ready to turn on. There is a power cord on the back of this head unit that will run outside as well, but those will just connect in with a couple of little terminal blocks. So there we go. That's the first test run of this unit after everything's all hooked up. In a couple of seconds, it'll be blowing cold air and it's a pretty easy install. Now I do have a few other things to take care of outside. I have to tidy up those hoses that are hanging down. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of UV rep and Mr. Cool supplies to protect them from the sun. And they even sell these little plastic covers that go over front to really give them a nice, clean, polished look. But overall, it's a pretty quick install. Once the electrician's been done, you can have it installed in a day. And it's a good way to make your woodworking a little bit more comfortable in both summer and winter.